So I haven't done a video like this in a while, but why not bring it back to the channel? I'm going to add one player to the Chicago Blackhawks until this team wins the Stanley Cup. And looking at this Blackhawks team right now, this is going to take a while. Like we might have to add 14, 15 players to this team. On the top line, we got Jonathan Hayes, Lucas Reichel, and Taylor Radish. That's the number one line. On basically any other team in the league, this is your third line, potentially even fourth line. But in Chicago, this is what they're running with as their number one. Seth Jones is going to be leading the way for the defense at an 86 overall, but the rest of this defense is absolutely cool. Cooked. Caleb Jones, an 81 overall, he's on the top pairing, and the next two pairings, I'm not even going to discuss, it's that disappointing. The goaltending situation is even worse than our forwards and defense, and you would think that wouldn't be possible, and then you realize Peter Mrazek's the number one goaltender here. Now granted, if Peter Mrazek had a bit of support in the NHL, he actually might be a decent goaltender. So I'm not even going to bother simulating to the end of the regular season, I'm going right to the end of the postseason, because I know there's not a chance this team makes the postseason. And if they do, there's something fundamentally wrong with this game. Then again, we already know there's a bunch of things fundamentally wrong with this game, so Chicago might make the playoffs because they're currently sitting 500. So it's not much of a shocker here. Chicago's missing the playoffs, 27th in the entire league, 36, 41, and five. We're going to ignore this team right here. There is absolutely no reason that the St. Louis Blues, led by the GOAT, Robert Thomas, should be finishing below the Chicago Blackhawks. Subscribe right now if you think this is absolutely ridiculous. A Robert Thomas-led team not being above the Chicago Blackhawks. Ain't no way. Also, subscribe right now if you think the Chicago Blackhawks are a poverty franchise. So I'm not really surprised that Jonathan Taves is leading the way for this team. 23 goals and 37 helpers for 60 points. Seth Jones is having himself a decent season. He's going to be picking up 54 points. While Taylor Radish, he's going to be picking up 51. And honestly, Peter Mrazek, I'm amazed you picked up 30 wins this season. You even had four shouts in the process. Like, realistically, I think you held up your end of the bargain. You put up decent numbers. The team in front of you just stinks. There's nothing you can do about it. Meanwhile, Austin Matthews is just going to and pick up 62 goals this season because why not taking a look at the stanley cup playoffs we're having an incredibly realistic matchup as we're going to see the florida panthers take down the vancouver canucks the vancouver canucks made it all the way to the stanley cup final like the current vancouver canucks you remember when i was talking about this game being fundamentally flawed this is a perfect example so that's interesting spencer knight was the stanley cup winning goaltender 16 wins but there's actually one thing i just noticed this team went 16 and 2 the Florida Panthers only lost two games in the postseason. I guess this team's just completely goaded. So how this is working is I'm going to spin a wheel of positions, and the first position is going to be a left winger. Then I'm going to spin a wheel of NHL teams, and whichever NHL team we land on, we're going to be getting their best left winger. And we're starting off with the New York Rangers, and I can definitely live with that because I already know they got some elite players there. And just like that, the bread man's back in town. 93 overall, Artane Panarin. He's returning to the Chicago Blackhawks, and he's looking to win another Stanley Cup with them. Did Panarin ever win a Stanley Cup with the Blackhawks? I'm pretty sure he did. I'm taking that back. Artane Panarin fell in the first round in his first postseason appearance but he did play the superior franchise in the st louis blues so i mean honestly can you really blame him for losing i also just realized the only player remaining from that st louis blues team is colton pranko everyone else has left the team shout out to st louis legend troy brower though he picked up some big goals so our team premier had pretty good numbers this season 27 goals and 48 helpers for 75 points and considering the chicago blackhawks team he was on these are actually really good numbers ignore the plus minus of everyone else though because outside of Panarin in that first line this team was cooked. And when I say cooked, I mean 32nd in the entire league with only 30 wins cooked. If Peter Mrazek's goals against is somehow below three, I'll be amazed. I already know it's not going to be below three because we are allowing 3.2 goals per game. So yeah, it'll probably be around the 320, 330 mark. Okay, so me saying his goals against would be 330 was probably the stupidest thing I could have possibly said because if the team was only allowing 3.2 goals per game, how would he be 330, especially if he was the starter? That's neither here nor there. Peter Mrazek, 24 wins this season. I got nothing to say. You had four shutouts. Shout out to Peter. So for the second year in a row, we're going to see a Canadian team making the Stanley Cup final, and this time it's the Winnipeg Jets. That one's a bit more realistic than the Vancouver Canucks, but Tampa Bay is coming out on top in six games. At least we're somewhat realistic here. Okay, respectfully, how did the Winnipeg Jets get this far with Connor Halbuck putting up an 896 save percentage and a 330 goals per game? They made it to the Stanley Cup final with these numbers. Bro, what? All right, with our second spin, it really doesn't matter what we get because everything's going to be an upgrade for this team, but we're going to be adding a center to the team. Similar to the position we got, anything's going to be an upgrade for this team, but it looks like we're going to be landing on the Nashville Predators, and I have no issue with that because these rosters are before the offseason. So Matt Duchesne's still here. So there was a handful of players I'd rather have had from the Nashville Predators, but Matt Duchesne's the number one center here, so I'm going to bring him to the team. Like looking at the Nashville Predators, I would have been extremely happy with Roman Yossi, UC Soros, and even Philip Forsberg. But Matt Duchesne's a massive upgrade for this team, so we'll take what we can get. We're slowly building a core here. It's not a good core, but we're slowly building one. Okay, so so Panarin might have taken a step back, only 67 points, nothing to be concerned about. We picked up Matt Duchesne, he had 57, um, 
Seth Jones was minus 40. Our number one pairing defenseman was minus 40. Was anyone worse than that? Nope. But we had somebody that was minus 40. So I think you already know where we're headed. 28 wins. We're three seasons in now and we've gone backwards and we only picked up 28 wins. This is going to take way longer than I thought. Shout out to Kucherov though. He led the league with 108 points. We have to highlight at least one positive thing from this season. And I guess you could say another positive would be Sidney Crosby making it all the way to the Stanley Cup final, but he fell in seven games to the Dallas Stars. At least you made it there. Nah, Pittsburgh really let Crosby down. He came out here, picked up 38 points in 25 games. Malkin picked up 34. I mean, I guess Jake Getzel's down here with 22, and the rest of the team is basically non-existent. But shout out to Ricardo Kell, though. He did something picking up 18 points. So the next position we're going to be bringing onto the team is going to be a right winger. And it looks like that right winger is going to be joining us from the Vancouver Canucks. So we would have been better off with any other position. Center or left wing, we could have got Elias Pettersson. Left D-man, Quinn Hughes. Right D-man, Hironik. Left winger slash center, JT Miller. Left winger, Kuzmenko. Goaltender, Thatcher Demko. But instead, we're going to be bringing 84 overall Brock Besser onto the team. So I'm a big Brock Besser fan, and I think he's in a terrible situation right now. And a good situation for him, I believe, would be the St. Louis Blues. So if you would be willing to trade Brock Besser for, I don't know, maybe a Marco Scandella, we can get a deal done. But even after moving Chicago's original first line down to their second line, and Lucas Reichel, Jonathan Taves, and Taylor Radish, this team's still absolute hot garbage. So it looks like Brock Besser is going to be the savior of the Chicago Blackhawks. This team's jumping up all the way to 18th in the entire league, 39, 32, and 11. I mean, they're still missing the postseason, but hey, we're headed in the right direction. And we also only missed by one point. This team was a borderline playoff team after adding Brock Besser. Who would have thought? Our tamepreneur might be leading the team, but really the focus is surrounding Brock Besser. 30 goals and 30 assists for 60 points. Plus 11. Look at the plus minus on this team now. Last season, Seth Jones was minus 40. What was he this season? Minus 8. That's the Brock Besser effect right there. But as we know, this team's not making the postseason, but the Anaheim Ducks did, and they made it all the way to the conference finals somehow. No point trying to figure out how they made it that far. Let's just find out who our next player is going to be. So we've already brought three forwards onto the team. I could really use a defenseman or even a goaltender, but instead, we're just going to bring another right winger onto the team. And really, I don't really care what team we land on, but it looks like it's going to be the Vegas Golden Knights, and I think that means we're going to be bringing Mark Stone onto the team. And although Brock Besser single-handedly saved the Chicago Blackhawks last season, He's going to be demoted to the second line because Mark Stone's now on the team. So now we have ourselves a first line consisting of our team premier, Matt Duchesne and Mark Stone. With Mark Stone on the Chicago Blackhawks, this team went on a roll. And they started rolling down a hill, 23rd in the entire league, 38 wins this season. One less than last season. Just going to leave it at that, I got nothing to say. Like usual, it looks like our team premier is leading the way with 76 points, but Mark Stone's going to be picking up 71 in the process. But Brock Besser, I'm sorry I had to take you off the first line. Next season, I'm bringing you back up to the first line just to see if that has a major impact on this team or not because you bring intangibles to that first line and people sleep on that also peter mraz is getting pretty close to below three goals a game he's down to 3.02 now i love the progression and finally the current day boston bruins don't choke and they go on to win a stanley cup defeating the winnipeg jets in six games that's two stanley cup finals winnipeg's made it to now meanwhile we can't even win 40 games at least how bucks numbers were better this time a 915 and a 261 defense or goaltending that's all i want here left defenseman right defenseman goaltender any of those three, and it looks like we're getting the left D-man. Now all we have to hope is that we're landing on a good team here, because if we land on the Arizona Coyotes or something, we're cooked. The Columbus Blue Jackets, I can live with that because they got a stud over there. And which stud is that? It's Zach Wierenski. We're bringing the duo back together of Wierenski and Seth Jones. It didn't work last time around, so I'm expecting it won't work this time around. And now we're in Chicago, so things are just worse. So after moving Caleb Jones down to the second defense pairing, this defense still looks chopped. I mean, we have Zach Wierenski now. Maybe he can help this team win 40 games. I think that's too much pressure to put on him, though. Zach Wierenski was an absolute game changer for the Chicago Blackhawks. 11th in the entire league, 44, 30, and 8. Not only did we make the playoffs, but this team had a goals allowed per game of under three. That means Peter Mrazek's goals against was under three. Ain't no way. So Zach Ransky might only be picking up 42 points, but the impact he had on this team isn't even measurable. He's in between the pipes, Peter Mrazek, 34 wins, seven shots, a 913 save percentage, and a 266 goals against. What? So we've reached something that I didn't think we would see for another few years, the postseason. But we have Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers in the first round. So we might as well pack our bags already. We're getting knocked out in three games. Guys, it's time to celebrate. We're four games into the series and we're only down three games to one so you know what that means we won a game we didn't get swept to the Edmonton Oilers now I assume we're about to lose game five here are we going on a run hold on hold on now we gotta simulate game by game ain't no way the Chicago Blackhawks team is going on a run and yes Athanasio is currently leading the team in points 
There's no way we get past Edmonton if Athanasi was leading the team in points. Okay, we're entering the third period in a one goal game and we're up. All right, it's a tie game and we're heading into overtime. Chicago actually has a chance of staying alive in this series. I mean, I'm just going to simulate the rest of this game. I don't really want to jump into it. Yeah, we're getting eliminated. Drysdale is going to pick one up five minutes into the period. So I'm just going to keep it a thousand. I knew we weren't going to get past the Edmonton Oilers and I didn't really want to sit through overtime. After Edmonton took us down in the first round, they ended up losing to the LA Kings in the second round, but then LA's losing to Winnipeg, and then Winnipeg's going to lose to Tampa. So with our next spin here on the wheel positions, we could really use a goaltender, but instead we're just going to be adding another left defenseman to the team. Now realistically, I'm actually just hoping for the Colorado Avalanche, because it doesn't really matter what defenseman we choose from that team, it's going to be a decent one, but instead we're getting the Anaheim Ducks. The Anaheim Ducks might be in a tough position as a team right now, but Cam Fowler is going to be joining us, and as a second pairing left defenseman, I've got no issue with that. With the past two additions we're slowly developing a decent defensive core here zach renzi cam fowler and seth jones like honestly i can live with that defense the other three guys we're not going to discuss so i understand we've been making a lot of upgrades to the defensive core here but sixth in the entire league just looks way too unrealistic and the only reason we're here is because of the amount of overtime losses we had like if you look at actual wins where are we yeah, we're way down here. So how good we actually are is up for debate. Cam Fowler, I'm not really expecting you to do too much offensively, but I'm more interested in Peter Mrazek's numbers. A 9-10 and a 276. Bro also just casually picked up 9 shutouts. And then Stalock had 2. So in our 44 wins or 43 wins, whatever it was, a quarter of them came from shutouts. So basically all we need to do in order to win is just pick up non-stop shutouts. But I don't think that's going to be happening against the National Predators because that's who we're going to be taking on the first round. Not only did we sweep the National Predators, but Peter Mrazek picked up a shutout and we scored 19 goals in four games this team might be legit so we've made it to the second round 18 years earlier than i expected and now we have the winnipeg jets there's three canadian teams left and i'm expecting all they're going to be losing in their next matchup now if we complete a sweep here i'm buying a car and bedard jersey i really hope we don't sweep the winnipeg jets that was really close i did not want to spend 300 on a car and bedard jersey not because i don't want a car and bedard jersey but I don't want to spend $300, and we've lost two games now. This is not heading in the right direction, is it? We're going to drop this one, aren't we? All right, we're taking Winnipeg down in six games, and we're off to the conference finals. So two of the three Canadian teams are falling in the second round, but the remaining one we're going to have to go against in the Edmonton Oilers. And this team's coming off back-to-back -back sweeps, and Connor McDavid's rolling. Okay, now see this? This is a bit more realistic. Down 3-1 in the series, and we just lost in four games. Five games. Same difference. We're out in the conference finals. So Edmonton's going to keep on cruising in the playoffs and they're going to go 16 and 2 in the playoffs taking home the Stanley Cup. So I'm incredibly happy with how our team performed. Our Tampa Panarin is going to lead the way with 16 points, but Peter Mrazek, there's no shame for you. Absolutely none. A 924 and a 219 in the playoffs. I can't ask for any more. A 953 and a 138 while picking up four shutouts in the postseason for Stuart Skinner. I'm just going to leave it at that. We got to let these stats soak in for a second. But real talk. EA, you got to fix this. There's no reason a goaltender should be putting up this numbers especially when there's Stuart Skinner at an 84 overall. Now, if the goaltender was a 92 or a 93, fair enough. But it's an 84 overall Stuart Skinner. So Sturkin's a 92 and he put up a 922 and a 242. Those aren't bad numbers, but he's also like 10 overalls higher. With how Peter mrazek has been playing, I really don't think we need a goaltender anymore. So we're going to be picking up a right defenseman. After this pickup, our defensive core might be one of the best in the entire league. So give me the Colorado Avalanche here, San Jose Sharks, or even Boston Bruins. Just one team that has elite defense, we were so close to Colorado. Oh, we could have had Kale McCarr. We're still going to get a great defenseman from Dallas, but we could have had Kale McCarr. That would have been a game changer. So we're getting absolutely saved here. Miro Heiskanen, left defenseman, and right defenseman. So that means I can add him to the team. If not for Miro Heiskanen, this is who we would have been bringing onto the team. Colin Miller. 82 overall Colin Miller. Now I'm not saying Colin Miller is a bad defenseman, but I'm also saying he's not much of an upgrade from what we have here. Thankfully, we're bringing Miro Heiskanen onto the team. 89 overall. That's going to be a massive upgrade for us. So just three spins ago, we had arguably one of the worst defenses in the entire league. And here we are. One of the best. You love to see it. So the Blackhawks are seeing a bit of a decline this season, dropping to 10th in the entire league. But the only reason for that is we're not getting as many OT losses. Besides that, the team's basically identical. Heiskanen had himself a fantastic season, picking up 12 goals and 48 assists for 60 points, fourth on the team in scoring. While my dog, Peter Mrazek, 38 wins, 7 shots. A 915 and a 253. Now nah, he's one of the best goaltenders in the entire league right now. Like, where was he in goaltender wins? But he was fairly high up there. Sixth in goaltender wins. Honestly, I'm not going to complain about that. In the postseason, we got ourselves a new matchup because we have to take on the LA Kings, a team we haven't seen yet. And since we haven't seen the LA Kings, they're absolutely cooking us right now. 
We're down 3-1 in the series, and I think we're about to get eliminated. No, we're not. We're surviving another day in Game 5, and in Game 6, we're going to be doing the exact same, and now we're headed to a Game 7 elimination. So I'm jumping right into this game. We're going to see Chicago taking an early lead, and we're cruising to a victory here. 3-0. I was about to say we have a 3-0 lead. We're not blowing this. My eyes are closed right now. I just simulated overtime. What happened? We lost. We lost in overtime. I want to celebrate Sidney Crosby winning a Stanley Cup here. I really do. They went to seven games in three of their four series, but I just can't celebrate with how we performed. Okay, so really we don't have to worry about the defense anymore. It's between goaltending and forwards, but now it's time for us to bring another right winger onto the team. So off the top of my head, I can think of one team we could get an elite right winger from. The St. Louis Blues, but instead we'll have to settle for the Boston Bruins. Now it's a real shame that we couldn't have gotten this team, because look at all the elite right wingers they have. Jordan Cairo, Pavel Busnevich, the GOAT, Robert Thomas. We could have brought some of the greatest onto our team. But instead, I'm going to have to settle for this scrub, David Pasternak. It's not like he's done anything notable recently. Now, but real talk, shout out to David Pasternak for securing the bag. It's good to see him getting his money. The addition of David Pasternak is helping this team win a few extra games this season, 47, 29, and 6, and we're sixth in the entire league. And David Pasternak didn't just help a little bit. He absolutely dominated for this team, 54 goals and 40 helpers for 94 points. And the 54 goals that he is picking up is going to put him first in the the entire league so he's taking home the rocket richard but that's not the main goal for this team we're looking at taking home a stanley cup and now we have to get past the winnipeg jets in the first round so far through four games we've split the series with winnipeg and we're heading into game five and now we're down three two in the series that wasn't the result i was looking for so we gotta see if we'll be able to survive another day in game six and that's not what's happening because we're getting absolutely smoked seven to two yeah so i don't know if i just became absolutely delusional after those two good seasons that pierre mrazic had but he's not our guy i don't know why i'm thinking he could be our guy he isn't the guy. So with all that being said, give me a goaltender. I want a goaltender here, but instead we're just going to get another right winger. And honestly, I shouldn't act like we're going to be here left empty handed because we're going to be getting an elite right winger from the Colorado Avalanche. Now you might have noticed the Chicago Blackhawks with the next selection and you might be wondering, how can I add a player from the Chicago Blackhawks? Well, in that situation, I can add an NHL legend from their alumni team. So once again, we're going to be missing out on NHL greats such as Robert Thomas. So I guess we'll have to settle with Nathan McKinnon. I mean, he's a 95 overall. I'm pretty sure he's good at this hockey thing. So looking at this team right now, I feel like our top six is enough to carry us to a Stanley Cup. Like defensively, we're probably one of the best in the entire league. Miro Heiskanen, Rinsky, Seth Jones. I don't know why we keep moving Cam Fowler down to the third pairing here. But you know what? We're just going to roll with it. In between the pipes is our biggest issue though. Peter Mrazek, 80 overall. If we get a goaltender, we're winning a Stanley Cup. That's really all we need. It's been a dark few years in Chicago, but here we are. First in the entire league, 51, 22, and 9. The best team in the entire league, scoring 3.3 goals per game and only allowing 2.55. No, the Chicago Blackhawks are here and they're ready to win a Stanley Cup. Okay, after seeing how well our team did and the scoring on this team looking fantastic, Nathan McKinnon only picking up 76 points is very disappointing. There's not really too much else I can say about that. I was expecting him to pick up 9 points but Peter Mrazek my guy 36 wins six shots a 915 and a 248 those are Stanley Cup goaltending numbers and to start off this series we're off to Canada as we have to take on the Calgary Flames how just how first in the entire league right now and now we're down 3-1 in the series okay we won game five thankfully can we win game six maybe come back into this series all right we're off to an elimination game seven can we complete the 3-1 comeback we weren't able to last time so maybe we can do it this time, who knows? But there's no reason we should even be in this position. All right, so we're picking up two goals in the first period and we're picking up another two in the second. We have a 4-1 lead heading into the third period. My eyes are closed right now. I'm simulating the third period. If I open my eyes and I see it's a 4-4 tie, you're gonna hear a loud bang because the controller is being thrown. Thank you. I could not afford to break this controller right now. Heading into the second round, we got ourselves a tougher matchup in the Colorado Avalanche, but we have to remember they no longer have Nathan McKinnon. He's on our team. That should be enough to give us the edge. And it looks like it was enough to give us the edge because we currently have a 3-1 lead in the series. We're entering game five and we're closing this one out in a five game series. Entering the conference finals, we have to take on a team that's had our number the entire video so far, the Edmonton Oilers. And they still have Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. So unless Peter Mrazek gives us a masterclass, this could go either way. Through four games, we've currently split the series with Edmonton we're entering game five we need to get a big win here and that's exactly what's happening we're taking that one three to two and in game six are we going to be able to close out the series no we aren't so that means we're head to game seven out of any team in the playoffs Edmonton's one I don't want to go against in game seven McDavid's picking up the first two goals of the game we're going to be able to respond in the third period second period I mean we're off to the third period are we going to be able to come back into this game who knows okay I don't want to sit through this I'm simulating the rest of the period did we win no we got smoked 
Hopefully our next spin can get us a new goaltender. All we need is like an 85 overall and we're winning a Stanley Cup. Offensively, this team is doing absolutely everything they could. In between the pipes, Peter Mrazek, a 902 and a 283 just aren't going to cut it. Just give me a goalie. That's all I need. Give me a goaltender as long as it's a good goaltender. Okay, a right defenseman. Not exactly what we needed, but I guess I'll take it. So I'll go ahead and spin the wheel of NHL teams. Who are we going to land on here? It looks like it's going to be the Edmonton Oilers. No, it's not. It's the Florida Panthers. So the Chicago Blackhawks no longer need any more defensemen. We got Aaron Ekblad on the team. He's an 88 overall. So we got Ekblad, Seth Jones, Miro Heiskanen, Cam Fowler, and Zach Rensky. I don't really care who our sixth defenseman is. It can be a 70 overall for all I care. Our defense is set. Just give me a goaltender next spin. Ain't no way we just went from first in the entire league to 43, 30, and 9. We just added Aaron Ekblad and we lost what an additional seven games this game's broken okay so you're telling me our team lost an additional seven games but Panarin picked up 96 points McKinnon picked up 92 and Pasta picked up 80 I'm just assuming Peter Mrazek was a bum yeah he was 897 and a 302 so you know what's about to happen he's gonna win a Stanley Cup now that he's put up these bummy numbers either that or we're getting swept in the first round there's no in between okay hold on Peter Mrazek you might be playing the worst hockey of your career right now but Edmonton missed the playoffs so I need you to do a complete 180 we have a chance this is our best chance we've had so far this entire video we're about to waste this opportunity I already know it I've just lost all faith in this team I'm simulating right to the end of the series like there's nothing else to say anymore nothing at all okay we won in five games we got Minnesota in the second round all right hold on we might be able to do something here I'll simulate five games instead this time can we cook this team we swept them okay we're eight and one right now this team's going on a roll Peter Mrazek's locking in so we've reached the conference finals once again this time around it's the Seattle Kraken over in the Eastern Conference we have Tampa Bay versus Columbus best case Ontario we beat the Seattle Kraken and take on the Columbus Blue Jackets but he's there without Zach Wierenski, and so far we haven't taken anyone away from Tampa so far we've split the series with Seattle it's two games apiece game five is gonna be a massive one we need to win this one we're gonna be taking it in overtime can we finish out this series in six games don't fold. Best case Ontario happened. We have the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Stanley Cup final. I'm not messing around. I don't even want to look at the playoff bracket. We're simulating the rest of this series. Can we close it out? We're closing it out in a sweep. The Chicago Blackhawks are them. That statement will not be made for probably another 10 years. The future looks okay because you have Bedard, but outside of that, questionable to say the least. Peter Mrazek really did a 180. 16 and 3 in the postseason picked up a shutout a 919 save percentage and a 229 goals against at the beginning of this video i didn't think there was a chance we would win a stanley cup with peter mrazek and net but here we are who would have thought